I am rolling. Got some pre roll on there. Just to you talking, yeah. Five, four, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm on? Yeah. I'm on right now? You're on. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's uh, Monday, right? Um, so I made some notes uh, for my IGDP. It's, it's uh, wrapped up as of today, okay? So I'll take you back to September 10th, 2018. We kicked it off. We had five weeks of, what did we do for five weeks? Script writing. All right, everyone's favorite. Out of 24 of you, 21 of you fulfilled that, uh, that agreement. So congratulations to that, to uh, those of you who did that. Um, four groups total were formed. And as of today, we have three films submitted with one pending in the editing room. So um, that's good. Um, so it's kind of a collaborative effort between you and your group. Um, in December, I'm going to be going to St. Cloud State University for my IGDP to uh, spend some time with their film professor to see how we can improve the films here at Farmington High School. So I hope to learn a lot from their professors on how to push the envelope a little bit more in this class with this project. Okay? So um, we're going to watch the three films right now, and then we're going to shift gears to um, some history of television. So. Let's watch those three films first, and then uh, I may call on uh, the groups to kind of set up your script for us also. Okay, so the first one is called Epic Phone. And, uh, if you would be so kind, this group with Epic Phone, please raise your hand. These guys. All right. First of all, whose script is this? Mason's. Mason's script. All right. You want to set this up for us, or how you were inspired, or what came about? Uh, basically, you were talking about just how simple things could be, like just a simple concept. So I thought of just losing a phone for a day, for an hour of school, and be looking for it during the last hour before the bedroom. That would be detrimental to me, because I, I have a lot of stuff on my phone, but it's probably even more detrimental to a high school kid to lose your phone, correct? Yeah. You guys could, that's, see, that's a topic that everyone could relate to, right? There's a, there's a lot of people, even right here, you've got kids on their phone, so... They're, they're glued, some of you guys are glued to your phone. It's part, it's become part of you. So that was a good uh, topic to engage your audience in something that everyone can apply their own lives to. Um, any uh, challenges for you guys as far as filming or editing? Uh, yeah, same clothes, it's kind yeah, of Yeah, trying to not And unnamed. And so what do we call that if you have a red sweatshirt on and then the next scene you have a blue sweatshirt on? A break in continuity. Very good. Break in continuity. All right. So we're, we're going to be uh, filming a movie in movie studio and television production second hour. And I get to actually direct that film. And I've, we've chosen all of our actors and all of our actresses. And they've taken... They they brought in all of their clothes ahead of time, which is going to be really cool to do that. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna play this uh, short film, and it's gonna be great. You want it? Yep. Yeah. All the way. You bet. You might need to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. I have an idea. Follow me. Can I go to the bathroom? Yes, Ron, you can go to the bathroom. Can I go to the bathroom? 
I go to the nurse? Why do you need to go to the nurse? Oh, here it is like a gym. Yeah, you can go to the nurse, but grab the pet house on the way out. Questions for the phone group, the epic phone group. Hunter. So, yeah, what did they, what, the phone at the end was what? What was that? Whose was that? Yeah, that yes. His. So, okay. what happened to his phone number? They, they probably found it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Any other questions oh, for this group? This one, yeah. Yes. I noticed that the end, because before we were having problems with, uh, Oh, and part with the and stuff, it would go slow and then it would speed up. I noticed it did it, it still did it. Hmm. We tried fixing it and it still, I still noticed it sped okay. up a little bit. All right, something to look at for our final exam on editing. Yeah, I don't, uh, we tried to figure it out and we yep. have to figure it out. All right. Any other questions for this group? Jordan? I'm, I'm just like group. Oh, okay. Any other questions for this group as far as pre production, production, post production, editing? Anything? Yes. They had logos on their clothes. They had logos on their clothes. All right. That's kind of a no-no in short films because you don't want to uh, uh, advertise for different companies. So, um, yeah. So, try we try to wear uh, clothing that doesn't say Nike or Under Armour or Adidas or or whatever. So, good, good observation. All right. So we're gonna go to the next one. I had a dream short film which is next on our list. And this group, raise your hand please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Andy's over there too. All right, so whose script is this? This was, uh, it was, the main idea is Hunter, but okay. we had, we had sure. a lot from all of ours combined. We kind of combined it. Okay. Yeah, we combined all our scripts together and made one. That's a great idea. That's yeah. what I suggested you do. Like, get together, don't have to choose one central script, but come up with a different idea. All right, cool. Um, anything you want to say to set it up, or should we just watch it? Just watch it. <laughs> uh, well, so, okay, so basically it's about... A kid, I'll summarize it. So it's about a kid who is exhausted because he's had so much time at school and he has a paper due the next day and then he falls asleep and a bunch of crazy stuff happens and then he goes and turns the paper in and, well, you'll, you'll, we'll see. Okay.
So everybody, thank you for showing up. We will start light today with a few warm-ups, so everybody just sit still and patiently.
question. Did he <laughs> intentionally <laughs> fall down in the hallway, or was that completely an accident? Yeah. Like, it's just like behind the scenes like, kind of stuff yeah. that we can't really release, so. <laughs> I guess like eight, maybe at the earliest. No questions, cool. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Jordan, I like, I like the question. cat. I like the cat. So it's Andy's, Andy's cat. Andy's cat, Malibu. Yeah. Andy's Very cat cool. Cat to tame her. Yes. <laughs> to make her sit still. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This one is called Lost. And who is the producer of this one? We just don't know what to think. Why say anything to set this up? Whose script was it? Yours? Okay. Anything that we should know about your script before we watch it? <laughs> it was different, and then somebody couldn't come early when we're filming, so we had to like kind of change the second half and like figure it all out before like get back on so we could be in a couple times. Okay. Was it more challenging to film it for you guys, or more challenging to edit edit it? Film it. Okay. It was mostly like getting everyone there that needed to be in it, I guess, and just like. Editing it was kind of hard because some of the music, because it like was being kind of difficult sometimes and wouldn't move. But okay. Well, we corrected that because I think I remember yeah. what we did. So, oh. all right. Should we roll it? Yes. Yeah, it's lights. It's lights. <coughs>
I really like how you guys told your story outside of the four walls. Well, I guess we have more than four walls in the school, but you, you know, you took that extra step to get out and tell your story and like use the nature and the trees and the, the lake and like, I mean, it was, it was really well done. The music soundtrack, uh, the mixing of your audio with your music was, was really good. So, very nice job. Very Any nice other job. comments for this group? Very nice job. My comments? Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, um, so one group is going to be uh, finishing theirs um, sometime this week, and then we'll, we'll take a look at theirs when they, when they get it done. So, um, we're going to move into some note taking today. Um, so you're going to need um, in your notebook some piece of paper or a notebook. I've got some notebook paper if anybody needs some. Does anybody need any paper? All right, so we're going to discuss the, the history of television today. All right? Yay! Oh, exactly. Now, I'll give you time to write some of these slides down because you will be tested on these on your final exam. So um, make sure that you're taking notes on this. A uh, few inventions have had as much effect on contemporary American society as television. Before 1947, the number of U.S. homes with television sets could be measured in the thousands. By late 1990s, 98% of U.S. homes had at least one television set. Those sets were on for an average of more than seven hours per day. Important information here, before 1947, the number of U.S. homes with television sets could be measured in thousands. This is what they had for entertainment, was television. They didn't have Netflix, they didn't have YouTube, they had television. And they also went to radio also. So radio plays were very popular way back in the 1940s, okay? Can you take some notes, please? There's some there's uh, information there on the screen. <laughs> yes. So you're saying like a family of nine would have one TV set? Yes. In the whole house? And they well. TVs were very expensive when they first came out. Oh. So they would all gather around in their living room and watch the television. Okay. Yes. All right, moving on. Any other questions on this one? Television. Did you write that down? Nothing is written down on your sheet. So you're going you're gonna to want to write down some information on your iPad up there.
Has TV always been in your homes? Everyone in here? Like yeah. from the day you were born? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Our suit. We used to have like these big, big, heavy box televisions, yeah. yes, that weighed like 300 pounds. So. Television's origin, brief history. There was no single inventor of the television. There were many inventors working on the idea of watching pictures on a screen. And uh, I put some clip art in here. This is what a, an old TV looked like. You had a couple knobs. There's uh, four knobs in there. There would be one that would turn up the black and white. So I'm like really dating myself here because I know exactly how that TV works. So there'd be one dial for black and white. There would be brightness and there would be contrast and that that uh, lower knob there, that's a little bit bigger, that was our volume. Yes? our TV, we still change all the remotes. Remote. Remote. This, this TV did not have a remote. That we're, we're talking your remote was your where way back. Your remote, your remote was your legs, was walking to the television. Okay? My, grandpa, my grandparents had one TV on the farm that I would go over to my grandparents and watch TV. They got three channels. Three. The news? Well, they had, we had cartoons, okay. but then at night they would have the news on there. Mm -hmm. But we had, we had three channels growing up, whether it was, we were at my grandparents or whether we were at our house. Yep. Inventors from all over the world have been working on transmitting pictures or objects onto a screen since the, night, or since the 1830s. But the first physical television didn't evolve until the 1900s. Next slide, inventors. This is kind of an interesting. Five men became the most popular and pre prestigious inventors of what we know today as television, giving the history of TV a rich beginning. Paul Nitko, John Baird, CTV, he was responsible for bringing color TV. You're going to want to write these names down on your notes. Uh, Charles Jenkins, Vladimir Zworykin, am I close? Anybody know that person? Uncle. Really? No. Right. <laughs> and Philo Farnsworth. They each contributed significantly, significantly to the development of television technology. And so we're going to go into more detail here on each of these five that you will need to know for your final exam. And I am not posting this information on Schoology. This is, one, this is your one and only chance to write this down. So is there going to be a test on this? This is on your final exam, yes. Oh, boy. Yep. So that's why I'm going so slow, so that you can write this down and absorb it into your brain. Yes. You guys need to know where, where you guys have spent... Uh, ten weeks doing this television stuff, you need to kind of have a, an idea of how did it all this start? I mean, it didn't start at Farmington High School in 1999 when I took the job. I mean, this has been in the works for many years. All right, so Paul Nipco. He invented the Nipco disc, one of the first successful technologies for television transmission. He invented the Nipco disc, one of the first successful technologies for television transmission. So when you're driving in like the country or in the, uh, the outskirts of a city, sometimes you'll see a big tower with blinking red lights. Yeah. Guess what that is? 
That's Paul. That's Paul Dibkow's invention. Oh, uh, it's, it's a transmitter, a television tower. Yes. Okay. So sending those signals out so that you can receive them on your, uh, bless you, on your antenna that's on top of your house. Some people even have cable television, so uh, you get your your TV a little bit more clearer than the rest of us. All right, next one. John Baird. He was a Scottish engineer. John Logie Baird was the first man, first man to televise pictures of objects in motion. He also demonstrated color television in 1928. Charles Jenkins, Charles Francis Jenkins was a pioneer of early cinema technology and the first person to demonstrate television in the United States. Charles Jenkins, Charles Francis. Francis is my grandpa's name. You can write that on the last name. Pardon me? What's the last name? Tauchi. Tauchi, I know that. Sorry. First person to demonstrate television in the United States. Next one, Vladimir Zworykin. I think I got that right. Zworykin studied at the St. Petersburg Institute of Technology, where from 1910 to 1912 he assisted physicist Boris Rosing in his experiments with a television system that consisted of a rotating mirror drum to scan an image and a cathode ray tube to display it. So cathode ray tubes, if you take a TV apart, you will have like the guts of the TV and you will see a cathode ray tube in the back of the big, big TVs. You won't see them in the new HD screens that we've got up here, okay? But in those big ones, you'll see all of the, the guts that make the TV work, okay? We still use uh, cathode ray tubes in our studio, okay? Our studio is not HD studio. It's still standard def. So we're still using 300-pound TVs in our studio, okay? It's very expensive to upgrade to high definition, so we have not done that quite yet. <laughs> yes, please. <coughs> Philo Farnsworth. Philo Farnsworth. He was an American inventor who developed the first all electronic television system. All right, mechanical versus electronic. At the dawn of television history, there were two distinct paths of technology experimented with by researchers. Early inventors attempted to either build a mechanical television system based on the technology of Paul Nipko's rotating discs, as we mentioned before, or they attempted to build an electronic television system using a cathode ray tube.
Electronic television <laughs> systems worked better and eventually replaced mechanical systems. If you look at the left, there's a mechanical television system. There's a whole series of, of discs there that spin, that make the image appear. And then we've got the cathode ray tube on the left side. Um, the top dial was typically UHF, and the bottom dial right there was VHF. So sometimes you could get even more channels by going to the VHF signal than UHF. But I remember, I remember um, my grandparents' TV, we could get channel 3, 5, and 7. That was about it. It went up to 13. I can still visualize that, that television that we watched TV at on their house. Yeah, I am 85 years old, by the way, too. You're 85? No, I'm not. You're I'm just kidding. But you guys probably think I am. No. No? No. Okay. How old do you think I am? 23. So mechanical versus electronic. Cable, remote controls, and plasma. Cable television, formerly known as community antenna television, or CATV, was born in the mountains of Pennsylvania in the late 1940s. The first successful color television system began commercial broadcasting in 1953. So color television began on the scene in 1953. Probably really expensive technology to buy way back, back then. June of 1956, the TV remote controller first entered the American home. First TV remote control called Lazy Bones. Lazy Bones. Yeah, Lazy Bones. Was developed in 1950 by Zenith. That's who made our first television at our house, at the Tauchi house. Zenith Electronics Corporation. I still remember getting our first TV with our first TV remote, and it was awesome that we didn't have to get up and go change the channel. And it wasn't too big. It was, it was about the size of it is right now. The very first prototype for a plasma display monitor was invented in 1964. So when, when TVs were first coming out, like the big TVs, um, plasma was the first one to come out as far as what was what was considered nice a nice TV to buy or like a, a high quality plasma. There were also some TVs that had they had the screen and then they had a big box in the back and then they had uh, a red light, a blue light and a green light shining up to this mirror that projected the light into the screen that actually was the images that you were viewing. So yeah, those were heavy televisions. About the size of your refrigerator at home. You put in place Anybody need more time with this slide? Got that one? All right. Next one, color television. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more knobs. We've got UHF, VHF, we've got probably some contrast, volume. You could, you could adjust how bright the color was. You could adjust how colorful, the, yeah, the tint, uh, maybe the hue, saturation. And all those things are appearing now in, what is the name of your editing system? Uh, Adobe Premiere. Boom, you got it. So you can go in and you can change some of those things, right? Yep. All right. Color television, the first TVs. Monochrome, meaning one color, or, yeah, one color. Mono, if you have stereo, you have mono sound. Mono is one channel. Same thing with, what? What about mono, like the disease? Very bad. No, is that like the same or is that different meaning? What does mono mean? I'm not a doctor. I don't know if there was a connection there. Thanks for asking. 
So monochrome was black and white televisions, sold for about $55, which only people of wealth could afford. All right, popular TV shows through the decades. 1930s, The Wizard of Oz, Snow White, Seven Dwarfs, King Kong, The Three Stooges. I still remember watching. You guys ever watch The Three Stooges? Come on. Yes? No? What? Whoa, yep. This is all on the test. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have created this beautiful slide had I not thought it was important. You didn't. What's wrong with the eighties? Oh well, that's that's important news to know though. That's a little edgy. Cosby Show. That was very popular when I was back when I was in high school. Yeah, my dad had a little Cosby sweater. Yep. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? It's fun about. Nineteen forties, the Looney Tunes, Popeye. Pop, I did a, I did in my communication research at Augustana. Communication research. Me and my friend Corey Camp and uh, um, Eric Bjork. We did a study on violence and cartoons. So we watched the Smurfs. We watched Popeye, and we watched a whole bunch of other cartoons that had um, violence in them. And that was our study for our communication research project with Dr. Kong. And uh, so we would watch an episode, and then we would keep track of how many slaps, hits, punches that there would be. And we would break that down into pie charts and graphs and give our findings in a five-page research paper. Okay? So. Um, What's that? What is that? Only to the 1950s. I Love Lucy. You guys know who Lucille Ball is? No. Really? You should look her up. Look her up on YouTube tonight. The Today Show, Leave It to Beaver. Tom and Jerry was another, I forgot about Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry is another cartoon that we watched. Super Lot, violent. Lots Super of violent. violence. Okay? Tom was the, Tom was the cat, right? Yeah. And Jerry was always, Tom was always trying to get Jerry. Okay. Uh, the 1960s. Days of Our Lives, Star Trek, The Brady Bunch, uh, The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone is awesome. I would love that. I'd watch many, uh, many hours of that. 1970s, Charlie's Angels, Brady Bunch again, Bewitched. 1980s, Dallas, 60 Minutes, The Dukes of Hazard, Thursday night at 7 o'clock. I still remember that. <laughs> and The Cosby Show. 1990s, The Simpsons, Law and Order. Friends, you guys don't know what Friends is, right? Yeah, we do. It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix, right? SpongeBob SquarePants and Full House. You had to put Seinfeld in there too. I should have Seinfeld. Okay. Don't don't switch. Oh, that's the 1960s. Say it again. It's only to the 1960s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Give me time. I'll get some water. Keep writing. Remember that episode where Well, he started Sure. Who's talking Alright, today's show. Today's TVs. They are in color, of course. High definition, Blu ray, 4K, UHD. So we, our, just, our family just got an, a UHD TV about, I don't know, four months ago. And when we watch TV as a family at our house, the, the actors and the actresses look like we're, we have a video camera in our living room and we're filming them and it looks almost like too perfect. Anybody else have UHD TV in their house? I probably I'm not, I'm not that. No? So next time you're at Sam's Club or Costco or Target or Best Buy, go ask one of the salespeople, can I, may I see a UHD TV? And you will see what I'm talking about. The actors, it looks like there's a camera just like 
like one of our regular video cameras that's just on them and they're just talking. It doesn't have that, that film look. Okay? Like movies have a, a film look, a 24 frames per second look. This looks almost like too perfect. It kind of drives me crazy when we're watching TV at our house. But anyway, that's UHD. Popular TV stations, of course there's ESPN, ABC, Fox, a and &E, CBS. Over the past 10 years, the median size of the average TV has increased from 34 inches to 72 inches. The median is 72? What? The median is 72? Yes. Great. Average of three minute long uh, commercial breaks. Commercial breaks, that's how, that's how the networks pay their actors and actresses and camera people and audio boom, boom pole operators. And who else gets paid from commercials? The people of the, the studio people, the executives, the president, the gaffers, the, the video editors, okay? When you're watching TV, you also have this button on your remote. My wife uses it all the time. Power? Nope. Mute. Nope. Commercial skip. It's like, oh my word, you're like killing me, Tauchi. I always call her Tauchi. She calls me Tauchi, I call her Tauchi. It's like, I want to watch the commercials because I want to share that with my students, right? So I'm always looking for ideas and I'm always looking for TV commercials to bring in to show you guys. So she's like killing my creativity. Jordan. Yes, two things. What about the CW? CW. Sorry, I didn't put the CW up there. I will next time. What about DVR? What do you want to say about DVR? Yep, so I just kind of talked about DVR in a secretive way where we can skip TV commercials, right? So yes, there are. Jordan just pointed out, I forgot to put, what did I forget to put up there? Yeah, no, I wasn't listening. What did I forget to put up there? According to Jordan, Ryan. D V R D V R Digital Video Recorder. So you can hook that up to your TV antenna. You can hook it up to what? TV antenna. Very good. Your TV antenna. You can record your shows. Mrs. Tauchi can re record her shows. And then she can skip all of the creative uh, TV commercials that are paying the studio, and the camera people, and the editors, and the executives. You guys understand that? Okay. Advertising revenue provides a significant portion of the funding for most television networks, which we just kind of discussed. So I went back to 2013 because I thought that was interesting. Uh, most popular TV shows of 2013, Greece. Big Bang Theory, 30 Rock, How I Met Your Mother, Games, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, Castle, Downtown Abbey. Mr. Mathis used to watch that. Downton one. Abbey. Yeah. It's Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Sorry, Miss Brent. Well, it's, no, I think it's right. I just think that's how they pronounce it over there. Okay. The Bachelor and Homeland. Greece. Greece was a TV show? No, I didn't read that. My bad. Oh, all right. Last year. This year's not over. Right. Oh, go back, yes. Anything for you, Michaela? I know. There you go. I'm watching Game of Thrones. Don't anybody spoil it for me right now. <laughs> no, anybody. It's awesome. I 
So I, I, I tried watching Breaking Bad, and I got to a certain episode, and I absolutely had to stop watching it. You couldn't buy it anymore? No, I just, I... Too much violence. It was too much violence for me. Do you know... Yeah, Do what? you know Christopher Lloyd, right? Yes. I was in a movie with him. You were in a movie with Christopher Lloyd. No, I'm kidding. No, we saw that on the notes yesterday. On your notes, in the actor notes. Oh, yeah. Which movie were you in? Not a serial killer. Really? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I swear to God, Christopher Floyd. I That's awesome. First of all, I don't know what the DJ is. I don't know what that is. You're a serial killer? Oh, yeah, that's right. Doc Brown. Yeah. Doc Brown. Yeah. Plus, he directs Big Bang Theory. Or he created Big Bang Theory. So how is Christopher Lloyd as a person? He's cool. He's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Back to the Future is like one of my favorite movies. Did he direct you in that? Did he did he direct you in that show? No, he was in it. He was one of the actors. Who was director? Some guy. What was the name of the movie in? I'm not a serial killer. We'll look it up. Do you have any lines? No, I have a some lines, but they got cut. They oh, really? Yeah. Just an extra in the background? Yeah. You get paid and you get to eat, usually. Where did they film that, Hunter? Minneapolis. Okay. How many years ago was that? Three or four or five. Four or five? Okay. <laughs> TV Impact. Television has changed the way changed our lives in a number of ways. It has, it has has. That's a typo. It has some positive effects with regard to education, entertainment, and providing current world events closer to the people. Did you try to say has had? Probably. I composed this when I was ill, so you'll have to excuse me. However, there have been some negative effects that television has brought. This is especially evident. In the social and health aspects, people who spend a lot of time watching TV also become more accustomed to a lethargic lifestyle and interact less with people. And there's a picture on this screen. What is the name of that picture on the screen? Yeah, what we call that something. What is it called? Well, true, yeah. What do we call that up in the top right? I don't know what the proper word is. What do they? What do we? You can describe it by looking at it. Like a blur. No. Go ahead, have you got a sensor. Dead screen. Nope. Sensor. Nope. What shape are those things in up there? Squares. Squares. Who said it? Color bars. Color bars. They're also called S M P T E. Simpty bars. Also. Okay. I just forgot to put Simpty up there, but you're going to take off? Okay. The future of TV. Web-driven. Watch and record live TV over the internet. Competition between internet and television. Narrow down to three channels. Netflix, video on demand, blockbusters closed down. Will TVs dis diminish? No. Do you guys think TV will dis diminish? No. Yes. Cable boxes maybe, but not TVs. What? Cable boxes maybe, but not TVs. Cable boxes already have. Streaming stuff is not the new thing, and it's gonna. TVs will go away. You still need the display. TVs will still need the display. Yeah, TVs will go away. They'll just make it so you can use stream services. Right, and that's how they are. Smart TVs, they just handle it. Yeah, like Apple TV. Yeah. Smart TV sandwich. And the last last slides. This might be information that you might want to. No? It's television history information will appear on your written final exam. Oh, good thing you took a picture of that. If the tripod plates show up this week, you will not be tested on this information in your final exam. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. If our tripod plates show up, this presentation will go away and you will not be tested severely on it. If we don't get the plates back, this, we will be testing on all of this stuff. Okay? Also, 
We had, I sent out an email to uh, all of your parents and guardians and told them that we had some unfortunate events happen in our studio. Someone stole our tripod plates and this parent decided that their experience for their son or daughter was very valuable in this classroom and has decided to replace all six of those tripod plates for you so that you can film. So starting tomorrow, you guys can plan your last project. We're not going to do another history lesson. This, this history stuff that I just gave you is going to be severely uh, implemented into your final exam. If we get the, plate, if we get the plates back, we won't, we won't be testing, okay? So um, I'm not sure when we're going to get the plates back or when we're going to get the, the new plates, but I would hope that we teach honesty, both Mr. Mathis and I, we teach honesty and integrity in here. At least we try to anyway. And um, even if we do get new plates, I would hope that the plates would be returned just because they don't belong to the person that took them. Okay? So please bring them back. I'm not sure who did it. but Anyway, um, any questions for me? So for the final uh, thing, are you doing this just for our class or only your own class? There's only one video, one class.